Hi, this is the third video in my unit about comparing and contrasting the simplest and most important kinds of functions in math, the linear and exponential functions, as part of my larger video series about a quick pre-calculus review for calculus. The mathematical points we'll make in this video are to focus on some subtleties with function notation and also what I call the symbolic representation of changes in function values. That's a little confusing, but I'll make it more clear as we go. It's real important for calculus that you understand that. And we'll focus on some Mathematica content, defining functions in Mathematica and making tables of values for those functions with a command called table. Display the tables with table form and table headings, and I'll also briefly talk more about dressing up graphs to make them look nicer. We've considered two examples, one a population growth example and one a car depreciation example. Let's focus on the population growth again for this video. It's about the city of Austin, Texas, and its growth from 2010 to 2013, and use of the model to estimate the population in the year 2020. This formula down here was our final approximate answer that we can use to help us estimate the population in the year 2020. It is a linear function of t. t only appears to a first power, and when we plot the function, we see a straight line. That's why it's called a linear function. Some subtleties. T is called the independent variable. It's the input for the function. It's a variable that represents a number. You pick different numbers for T and plug them into the function. P is the dependent variable. P depends on T. P is a function of T. These are all words that you use to describe what's going on here. The population depends on time. It's the output. F is just the function name. It's not a number. It's just the function name. Why do functions have names? Well, just like anything, you want to be able to compare different functions, and you want to have different names if you're going to compare them so you know what you're talking about when you've got a couple different functions. So it's the function name. It's not a number, but f of t is a number for different particular values of t. How do I enter functions in Mathematica? Well, let me type the function name here first, f, and then just like with Mathematica commands, you want to use square brackets instead of parentheses for the function argument, the input. Put the, the independent variable's name. Then, when you are first defining the function, you must put an underscore after the variable, after the independent variable. Once you've done defined the functions, then you don't need the underscore anymore. You can put an equal sign next, but I like using what's called a set delayed operator. I like using a colon equals. Don't worry about what that means. Just mimic me. And then I type the formula on the right-hand side of the function, 790 plus 31.7t. Putting the t right next to the 31.7t does multiply those two quantities, but as a habit, it's good to put a star in there. I haven't done that before to emphasize that you're multiplying those things. Now I can do shift return to enter the function, and if I type f of t without an underscore and do another shift return, I see the function spit back at me. By the way, you can clear things in Mathematica, the command clear, and then put an F inside the square brackets there and enter that, clears out the memory. The function no longer is in memory. If I hit this F of T here, it just spits back F of T at me. I'll re-enter the function and re-enter this line to see that it now is stored in its memory. All right, what do you do with function notation? Well, one thing you can do is you can plug in values. For example, if you want to find F of zero, which would be the population in 2010 times zero. You can type it like this, again, emphasizing that you must use square brackets. There you go. I entered it, 790,000. That was the initial population. What was the population after time t equals 10 in the year 2020? That'll be f of 10. Use square brackets. Do a shift enter here. This should be around 1,100,000 ,000 people. There we go. It's 1107. This was an approximation for the slope anyway, so if we had used a 95 over 3 here, we would have gotten something different. This is all approximate. Probably I should round that to 1,100,000 people, which again is 1.1 million people. When I plot this function, I can use an f of t here rather than the formula for the function. I can type the f of t there, and let me show you a couple plotting commands I didn't show you before. Here is the plot. I might want to make these labels for the tick marks bigger than they are here. I can do that with ticks style, capital T, capital S, arrow, uh, medium or large will make them bigger than the default. Here, let's see what they look like with medium. Ready? Watch it here. One, two, three, go. A little bit bigger. 
Large, I think, makes them too big in this case. Yeah, that's too big. Let's go back to medium. Another very important option in plotting command is plot range. Capital P, capital R, then do an arrow. And if I just put a list with two numbers like 0, 1200, by default, that's going to be the plot range for the Y, the Y window, Y min to Y max, 0 to 1200. That'll allow us to put the origin in the lower left like it should be here. This is not the origin to start with here. But if I do that plot range, yes, now we have the origin down here. This is P equals 0. This up here was P equals 790. So a couple of formatting things there that I wanted to show you and also show you that you can put the F of T in here. What I want to do for the rest of the video is talk about the table command. Okay, in, in conjunction with uh, the function values here. And I also want to talk about the, um, the symbolic representation of changes in function values. So we'll try to do that as quickly as we can here. Table, what does that do? Well, it can make tables of things. What does that mean? Uh, for example, if inside table I put an i comma f of i, for example, inside curvy braces, that's a list of two elements, and then I put uh, another comma, and then inside curvy braces again, I put i comma 0 comma 10, for example. This is going to create a list of 10, uh, actually 11 points. The points i comma f of i as i goes from 0 to 10 in units of one step at a time, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. There they are. The first point, if you will, is 0, 790. The second one is 1, 821.7, etc. The 11th one, at time equals 10, was 10, 1107. So these are the points that you would end up plotting if you were going to plot this graph that we had by hand. In the next video, I think I'll show you a way to actually do that in Mathematica with something called list plot. All right, um, but it's not in a table form that you would typically draw by hand. If I want to get it in the table form, I'd want to put this within a table form command in Mathematica. Okay, that'll display this table nicely, this list of points, as a column chart. There you go. And it probably would also be nice to label these columns table headings will do that for us. Table headings, I put a comma, then type table headings, capital T, capital H, arrow, and then in a list. I don't want any headings along the, the rows here, so I'm going to put the word none as the first entry. And for the second one inside a list, I'll put, um, let's see, T in quotes, and then F of T in quotes. Maybe P equals F of T. Let's see what that looks like. That should work. There we go. T is this first column. P equals F of T. Or if you just preferred F of T or just P, that would be the label for the second column. So table actually creates the, the list of points. Table form allows you to see a chart like this. Table headings will uh, label the columns and the rows. If I had put something other than none there, I could have labeled the rows. Final point to make in this video Something very important for calculus, again, it's symbolic representation of changes in function values. What do I mean by that? Let's deal with this function here. Okay, the 790 plus 31.7t. I want to ask if t changes by an amount delta t, capital delta there represents change in, it's capital Greek letter delta, Delta T represents one quantity, delta T. T changes by that amount. How much does P change by? In other words, what is delta P in terms of delta T? Symbolically, we can represent this by this, this equation, delta p equals, and here's where the function notation comes in handy, the function name. The function output at t plus delta t, I'm, I'm pretending t is the initial value of t. If I change t by delta t, the new value is going to be t plus delta t. Now actually delta t could be a negative number, so t plus delta t could be less than t. 
Usually when you're thinking about this, you're imagining delta t to be positive, so t plus delta t is bigger than t. That's the new value after t has changed from the value t to t plus delta t. What's the old value? It was f of t. This difference is going to represent the change in the population. What happens in this particular case with this particular formula? I'll pretend this is an exact equation here. All right, replace the principle is you whatever's inside the parentheses here for the function argument goes into the formula in place of the variable. So wherever I see the variable, the t there, I need to replace it with t plus delta t. So what's going to happen in this case? I'll get 790 plus 31.7 times in parentheses t plus delta t. That quantity, that expression, represents the function output at t plus delta t. It's very important that you get that right. Just replace the t with t plus delta t. Then we need to subtract f of t. Use parentheses. It's very important that you do that here. I'm subtracting that whole thing, put it in parentheses. There is f of t. There is the function value when I plug in t. This simplifies because of the distributive property. 790 plus 31.7 times t plus 31.7 times delta t. Distribute the minus sign through this parentheses here. Very important to get that right. Minus 790 minus 31.7 t. We get cancellation. 790s cancel and the 31.7 t's cancel. We're left with at the end here 31.7 times delta t. What this is telling us is that with this linear function, and in fact with any linear function, the change in the dependent variable, in this case the change in population, is proportional to the change in the time, the change in the independent variable. And in fact, the constant of proportionality is the slope, the rate of change. In this case, 31.7 thousand people per year times the number of years that have elapsed gives you the change in the population in thousands of people. That's the main mathematical point to make here. I'll come back to that in the next video, but I'll end this video here.